got a short video about uh, synthetic division for you. And so synthetic division is another way to try to divide polynomials, but there's a little bit of a caveat. This is only going to work when we divide by something that looks like x minus c, where c can be any real number. So what are you supposed to look for here? It always needs to be x minus something. So it's okay if c is negative, but there still needs to be that minus sign there. That's going to help us identify um, um, what actually goes where in the setup below. So let me give you kind of a concrete example about how this little algorithm works. So I want to divide this big polynomial 1x cubed, and I just wrote the 1 there for emphasis, plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4, and divide it by x minus 5. So here's another way to do this instead of long division. What we'll do is we'll always set it up this way with this little box right here. And what do you notice goes in that box? It's exactly what c is, and you see c is 5 here. So 5 goes in there, that's c. And then what goes on here are just the coefficients on each power of x that you have. And uh, they need to be written in kind of descending order. So what does that mean? The highest power of x, the coefficient on the highest power of x first, on down to the constant term. And then now here is the game after we do that. So how this will always work as soon as you get it all set up, we are going to just always, no matter what, just drop down the one here. And here's how it works after this. We're going to take five, what's in the box. We're gonna multiply it by one. And we're gonna add the result right here, which will be five. And when I do that now, you get seven. So what I'll do is we'll just repeat the process. I'm gonna take that five, and I'm gonna multiply it by the seven, and I'm gonna get uh, 35 if I do that, and I just add it right here. And if I do that, that would be 32, I think. And then the last thing, I'll do it one more time. I'm gonna take that five, and I'm gonna multiply it by 32. Oh boy, why'd I pick this one? That's uh. How much is that? 160, I think. We'll go with that. I think it's 160. <laughs> so uh, when I write that down, am I confident enough to write that down? I think so. 160. And uh, when I add that stuff now, I get 164. Assume I added that right. Now, how do you read this? So that's the end of the game. We're done. So how we should read this stuff here is, I mean, how I think of it is, this last piece, the 164, so I'm gonna read it from uh, right to left, which maybe is a little bit goofy. So what is this? This is your remainder. And then this is the constant, the thing without an x. This is the coefficient on x, and this is the coefficient on x squared. So what am I saying? As we read this way, we're increasing maybe the power of x, if you wanna think of it that way. So what you could write then is the quotient is equal to uh, 1x squared plus 7x plus 32. And then the remainder, uh, you could write it as 164. And then I'll, I won't be picky, maybe on like a written assignment or something, if you said 164, or if you told me, you know, 164 over what you divided by, so over x minus 5. Either one of those. So that in a nutshell is how synthetic division works. So let's maybe do uh, another example below. I want to do 2x cubed minus 5x plus 3 divided by x plus 2. Now there's a few things that's going on here. Um, one thing that you might notice that's happening, x plus 2 here, that doesn't have the form x minus c. In other words, we've got to be careful what is c, right? What should go here in this box? And what should go in that box, if you think about, this is the same thing as x minus negative 2. So negative 2 needs to go in that box. Maybe I shouldn't use the color blue. Maybe I'll use the color red. So negative two needs to go there because again, you're always translating this into x minus something. So after that though, there's one more tricky thing. If I notice the stuff I'm dividing by, I go x cubed, but then it jumps to just x. We skipped over, like what's really secretly inside of here, really there's a plus zero x squared sitting there. So this zero needs to count as one of your coefficients. So you must have placeholders is another way to say this. Otherwise, maybe you could probably imagine how I labeled stuff here would be off if I skipped over a power of x. So it's very important that you have a placeholder. So uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll say I'll put a, a yellow zero here. That's for the x squared. Otherwise, we'll try to play the same game. So to remind you of how this works, we'll drop down the two. And then now I'll start distributing or multiplying and then adding. So I'm going to take these two times each other, that'll be minus 4, and I'll add it there, so I'll just put minus 4. Now I'm going to take minus 2 times minus 4 is positive 8, 
and I'll add that. When you add it, you get positive three. And then now I'll take these two times each other and you get uh, negative six. And when you add those together now, you get negative three. So how do you read this stuff again? This is trying to tell you that your uh, quotient is this stuff. So I will say, what does that look like though? That looks like this is the remainder, this is the constant coefficient, this is the coefficient on x, and this is the coefficient on x cubed. So 2x, or sorry, x squared. 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. All right, that's those first three there. And then uh, the remainder then is just minus 3, or you could tell me minus 3 over what you divided by, x plus 2. Either way you want to write that, it's fine with me. Just do whatever my open math tells you to do. So just be careful again, identifying the correct C here. And then also, if you notice you skipped over a power of X, then yes, you need a zero as a placeholder.